Hello everyone, I'm Charlie here, straight from Diamond Foundation. Today we're looking at an uh, interesting uh, topic, steps to reduce poverty in Zambia. This is so critical, we know that uh, Zambia experiences poverty. It could be, it doesn't matter how we look at it, but uh, poverty is what Zambia is going through that makes it even to make so many other decisions in the wrong direction. So we're looking at how can we best, as a country, reduce poverty in Zambia. So um, uh, I've been thinking most of the time, I think of what can I do to help Zambia start thinking in the right direction as to uh, how it can improve the entire country other than looking at the way Zambia has been doing whatever they borrow the money from they borrow whatever the loans they get. It's like their focus is to develop Lusaka, Key Twin Dollar, Livingstone. And these are the major cities they, they look into when they're trying to borrow the money from wherever they borrow the money from. But that shouldn't be the case. So the effective ways to reduce poverty in Zambia is to develop and implement a rapid and sustainable economic growth policies and programs in areas such as health, education, nutrition, and sanitation, allowing the poor to participate and contribute to the growth, improve management of water and natural resources. Zambia has this is very, very important. Zambia has to embrace the Rural Development Plan. I know it's there, but it hasn't been used effectively. So what I'm trying to, to do here is to make sure we emphasize on how we can develop the rural area by designing programs that can reverse urban drift and reverse brain drain. It has to be, this program must be simultaneous. Because what I'm saying is urban drift is like most people who are in rural areas, whenever, especially students, when they're trying to graduate, they finish their schools, their focus is to go to Lusaka, Key Twin Dollar, to go and look for jobs. And then there are those who are already in Lusaka who, once they finish, they graduate from the universities, they also look up to go outside the country and do some work outside the country. But this has to be reversed if we adopt and embrace the Rural Development Plan. What I would suggest to this is this that the, the government should design some programs to create employment in rural areas other than always when you borrow when they borrow the money they want to use it in Lusaka to beautify Lusaka every time it's beautifying Lusaka and along the line of rail forgetting about the rural areas because the more the only way we can reduce urban drift is to create employment in rural areas how do we create those kind of employment this is where now when you borrow money you use that money in the right way of investing in rural areas which would keep those people who are in rural areas there and then you see that most of the people who are in Lusaka have started drifting again from Lusaka back to rural areas. That's how we can balance this economy. This is how we can balance this country so that uh, things are moving in the right direction. For now, the whole money we borrow ends in Lusaka, Kito and Dollar to make, to make you know, to impress other people, or to impress the people who are coming in. No, but we can impress them well if we develop the country evenly. So, I'm trying to emphasize on how to create and improve access to jobs and income and develop uh, entrepreneurial talent. Providing all people with access to basic social services, including education, healthcare, adequate food, sanitation, shelter, and clean water. Progressively developing social pro uh, protection system to support those who cannot support themselves. Empower people living in, in uh, poverty by involving them in the development and implementation of plans and programs to reduce 
and eradicate poverty. Their involvement ensures that programs reflect those things that are important to them. Remove barriers to equal access to resources and services. So when we are looking at this, it's important that we start looking at how we can balance urban and rural. And this time around, it's important to invest more in the rural than in urban areas because we already know that urban areas are always developed and that's why people, and that's why we find Lusaka and any other busy cities are crowded because there's been urban drift since independence. There hasn't been any time when people now are starting moving from, uh, from urban area to rural area. All of them, they try to shun and go to these urban areas. So, we can also look at uh, how the government can look into a system of increasing income. That how does, in, uh, uh, does the government increase income uh, to affect poverty? Studies show that 10% increase in a country's average income reduces poverty by as much as 20 to 30% improve management of water and other rural resources. So there are so many projects that we can do, we can create, that can make everybody who is even living in Osaka or Ndola, Kitwe, to start thinking of going to rural areas and go and invest in rural areas. And then as we are pl putting up that kind of a plan, then we have also to think of how we can bring the brain drain that is in diaspora to come and fill the space that those who are moving from Osaka to rural area to go and do in the rural area, then the diasporans are coming in to, to fill that space. So in, eventually you find that it will be like the distribution will be even because we have to do these things simultaneously. I guarantee this can work. And on top of this kind of a program, we also have to look at how we can create a buffer for all those who are graduating from high school so that the moment they graduate, they are not flooding, they are not going anywhere, they have to be somewhere in specific, like for example, the way we had the Zambia National Service. Such kind of programs should be created so that we create a buffer for all those who are graduating. The ones who have opportunity to go to universities, colleges, let them leave that kind of project uh, programs and go and continue their education while the others remain until they find what they can do. You have to put them in a buffer. And that way we are trying to create and solve the problem of flooding so many areas of Zambia by putting them in specific. You know, when you get used to one area, you tend to love the area and you start doing things in that area. And this is what I'm trying to say right now. So if we create Zambia National Service, it comes back and then when people or kids are graduating from those high schools, they will be able to go to those national service and keep them there until themselves they try to find what they can do, especially when they stay there longer, they'll, f they'll find themselves doing certain things that can even make their country do better than it's doing right now. You know, it's important to look at it that way. How, you know, let's look at how employment affect poverty. How does employment affect poverty? Employment for 30 weeks out of the out of the year rather than 20 raises the poverty exit rate by 16 percent and lowers the chances of re-entering poverty by a by a third this i can even quote uh, some people there can read this book by uh, Anne half uh, stevens is the director of the center for poverty research and uh, chair of economic de um, department at uc uc davis so you will see how you can start reducing when you try to create employment. When you are creating employment, that affects the poverty. The more people start working, the less the poverty comes in. Because poverty is affiliated to the income that the citizens of the country are getting. 
But what are the chances of getting out of poverty? What are the chances of getting out of poverty? You know that increased time spent in poverty is associated with the lower chances an individual will exit poverty, which ranges from 56% after one year poor to 13% for those that are in poverty. For seven years, for seven or more years, uh, this is going to happen. The key findings that we, has been done, what I've, I've, I've looked when I was looking into this issue, I find that um, increased time spent in poverty is, assist, is associated with the lower chances an individual who exit poverty, which ranges from 56% after one year, poor to 13% for those in poverty for seven or more years. A 3% increase in the regional unemployment rate, which is roughly the magnitude experienced at the beginning of uh, recession reduces the exit rate from poverty by approximately 6% per year and raises the annual rate of re-entry into poverty by 9%. The decline of approximately $100 in the 20, uh, uh, 2013... So ladies and gentlemen, um, what I would say now is this that uh, what I wanted to share is how we can get out of poverty as a Zambian. And those are some of the outline that I would, I would love the government, people in, in decision making have to look into. The most emphasis is how Zambia can channel and take people back to rural areas. Because the government is able to uh, create that environment for any citizen who are living in the country by taking the resources and put, uh, planting those resources in the areas, rural areas, where most of these people who move from rural area to urban area who never even decided to move to Lusaka because everything will be available where they are. So it's important to look into this. But if you want to know more about this particular topic, uh, I would uh, encourage you to follow us on Twitter. You can also subscribe on uh, our YouTube channel. And you can just click on the button just right at the bottom of this uh, YouTube you are listening to and you'll be there and get all the information you need at any time. So thank you. Have a wonderful day. We'll be right with you in the next episode.